everyone. It's Friday, January the 8th, 2021. Hope everybody's doing well today. So much is going on, and it seems like Harry and Megan um, have their PR team working overtime to clean up their image prior to the Mexit um, deadline. And also, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge um, are said to visit Harry and Meghan while in the USA. Or is this Meghan and Harry's PR team saying this? Let's get to the disclaimer. Full disclaimer is located under the description. This video is for entertainment on only, and it's just my opinions. I just love this picture. Look at just Meghan right there, and it just shows that uh, Meghan is just staring at Kate and everything over there. And... Uh, that's right. Uh, Megan, keep looking because you're looking at the future king and queen. And that is something you will never be. Let's get started. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you here is we always see so many photos of Megan with her uh, tongue out. Wonder where she gets it from. Uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Mama Doria. All right, let's start with Chris Ship's uh, recent tweets and about the uh, the court case where Megan is uh, asking her attorneys to go ahead and see if the high court will do a summary judgment. A change of date for the next high court stage of Megan's legal action against the mail on Sunday for publishing her personal letter to her father. It will now be heard on Tuesday the 19th of January. So I hope that uh, information is released on that date and I don't think she's got a chance of winning and we think that she postponed it uh, according to her alleged pregnancy at that particular time. Of course, the um, the reason was never released, but um, it says, oh, I know what I wanted to say, sorry, but um, we think because there were like 40-something instances in the book Finding Freedom that uh, the Mail on Sunday found that showed that Megan had to have lied and she, that she was involved with the book Finding Freedom, but she later changed her affidavit to say that she had released information through friends or through a third party. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, next tweet from Chris Ship, uh, who is the Royal Rota reporter, and I don't particularly like him or understand why he continues to report on Harry and Meghan, and I've said that to them many times. Buckingham Palace says that they have decided at this early stage in the year, that all royal garden parties in London and Edinburgh in 2021 have been canceled. Anyway, nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, then he goes on to say, uh, Prince Charles warns cancel risk becoming forgotten sea during COVID pandemic as patron of the Macmillan cancer. The prince says the charity has lost a third of its fundraising incomes. And I still think that uh, back in April when um, it said that William had uh, contracted COVID that they had also found something else in his lab reports. And I still think that there was some form of leukemia or something that they found that he has been treated for that the information has not been released about and that Charles was said to have went to Germany to look for um, treatments that um, are in the, uh, I guess, uh, beginning stages or uh, still you know, uh, trying to uh, to find cures to certain types of cancers. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and move on. Listen to this from my TV. Prince Harry feared forces members and veterans were among susceptible to suicide following a Mail on Sunday article. This is by Chris Ship. He feared members of the armed forces and military veterans were more susceptible to suicide following the Mail on Sunday article, which claimed Harry had turned his back on military. Ugh. Guys, do you really, really, is there any single living soul out there that believes that um, that members of the armed forces would have committed suicide because the Mail on Sunday put that uh, Harry had turned his back on the British military? Harry has really got some kind of higher uh, level thinking of himself if, if, if he believes that. That is the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard. His fears were set out in a legal document as part of the claim against the newspaper as the Duke of Sussex turned to the courts to set the record straight. The newspaper ran a story on October the 25th in which it claimed Harry had, been in, had not been in touch with the Royal Marines since he had left his honorary role as Captain General at the end of March. Excuse me one second. I just got to put one of my little doggies down. I got three of them. There you go, babe. Three of them sitting on my lap. Um, all right. The newspaper ran that story, and, and we know that he's supposed to be suing them because he said that he was, in fact, 
in touch with some of the people in the uh, the military and uh, that the report said that he wasn't. Well, maybe he wasn't in touch with the right people, the people that he needed to be to where he could actually uh, be of assistance to them. The role was handed back when Harry and Meghan left their roles as senior royals and moved on to the United States. The Mail on Sunday's article alleged that the Duke had snubbed the Marines by failing to keep in contact with them and ignoring a letter from Lord Dannett, the former head of the Army, who urged Harry to give more support to British military and veteran community. And we heard that um, the military wants William and that after March the 31st, which the Queen had vowed not to do anything until after that, we think that that honor, uh, Captain of the Royal Marines, will go to, uh, or Captain General of the Royal Marines, will go to Prince William which rightly so, he would be a much better person. How Harry and Meghan think that they uh, should be able to keep these honorary titles or roles or pay, uh, be patron of uh, these different charities and organizations and they're not even living in the UK anymore is just beyond me. But we all know that they're not right in the mind anyway in our opinions. So People Magazine says, Meghan and Harry, how they changed the royal family. Uh, yeah, right. They didn't change them for the good. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry changed the royal family forever. They don't regret their move. Guys, they're putting so many puff pieces out there right now because uh, they, they know that uh, everything is being said about them and we think everything is going to be, or hope everything will be removed come March the 31st. Says they took a huge leap of faith to embark on their new life. Yeah, right. They were just looking for money. Megan wanted out because she didn't want to follow royal protocol. She didn't want to be a part of a team. She wanted to be the team, the, the one out in the public eye. She wanted to be the star of the show. And sorry, you married the spare, uh, the, uh, the spare, not the uh, the one in line to be the future king. So he said that uh, Harry, who had long felt marginalized by the role of the spare in the line of secession, an issue that had plagued uh, royal generations of royal siblings, including Queen Elizabeth's sister, uh, Prince Princess Margaret, uh, finally found a solution. And remember the royal historian that wrote the new book. Um, um, his name is Robert Lacey. And he's kind of sides with Harry and Meghan. So I'm not going to believe anything that he has to say because he's definitely, uh, sounds like, on their payroll. But anyway, it said that um, to stay in the royal system as it was to go along with uh, subservience to those more senior than you. He has asserted his own identity. Yep, and stay that way. Stay gone, but stay quiet for us. This progressive new role... Let's just call it woke, as the couple described in their previous statement outlining the change, including uh, carrying, uh, carning their own income. Well, get off the 95% funded by the uh, the Duchy of Cornwall then, if you really want to fund your own self. Um, so we know you just want to keep one foot in and be able to... Sorry, it's okay. One of my dogs barking at the other. Didn't hear him walking in. Um, so the year started out with a lot of excitement and anticipation, says a source close to the prince. Harry was finally doing what he had wanted to do for years. And maybe that is true. But uh, if it hadn't been for Meghan, uh, then uh, I don't think he would have ever left. Maybe she gave him the confidence. Maybe she had just had his brain so warped that uh, he thought it was going to be different than what it actually is. So despite everything that had been going on this year, they didn't regret their move to the U.S. Boy, they just keep putting that out there. And one article after another is that they didn't regret it. They don't regret it. So they must be really regretting it then if they're putting all these pieces out there and trying to convince us of this. So people says Meghan Markle and Prince Harry hope 2021 can be a time of healing for their family, says a source. A time of healing for their family. Are you kidding? If you don't quit doing the things that you're doing, how is uh, the rift between your families ever going to be healed? Quit uh, putting them down. Quit uh, saying bad things about them and putting all this negative uh, puff pieces out in the press. With Meghan and Prince Harry's relocation to California, insiders say Harry and brother Prince uh, with Meghan and Prince Harry's relocation to California, insiders say Harry's brother, Prince William, will make amends in time. Oh, yeah, we heard about that. So it says that they're staying positive as they enter the new year. Well, good for them. It's pretty easy to stay positive when you're uh, millionaires and you don't have to worry about um, putting food on the table. You don't have to worry about uh, where your income is going to be coming from or how you're going to take care of your family and uh, and pay your mortgage payments. Yeah, I guess it's easy to stay positive if you are them, correct? 
As the Duke and Duchess of Sussex marks one year since announcing they would be stepping down as senior members of the royal family, they're hoping 2021 will be a time of healing, but not just for the world, but for their family. A source close to the couple tells people, All right, Omid, we got your message. Prince Harry and his older brother, Prince William, already fractured relationship, suffered when Harry fell for Meghan in 2016, and William wasn't afraid to voice his reservations about the romance moving too quickly. Well, good for him for um, for saying what he did, because I think he saw right through Meghan all of her lies and all of the, uh, the schemes and everything that she was up to. Plus, I'm sure he would have been privy to knowing what her real past was truly like before the royal family scrubbed it from the internet because they knew everybody would be searching for um, Harry's uh, girlfriend and Googling her because we didn't know who she was. However, Meghan and uh, Harry's relocation to California in March 2020, insiders say the royal siblings will make amends in due course. We'll see about that. If I were um, William and Kate and the rest of the royal family, I wouldn't be looking to make amends. Uh, maybe just um, to say, yes, you're still part of the family. We'll be civil to you. But why would you want to make amends with somebody who has done all these things to you and you haven't done anything, but you've had to stay quiet and, and read everything that's put out there about you and Megan spreading a rumor about um, William having an affair with um, Rose Hanbury and uh, and all of these things and how she's hurt Kate in every way, saying she wouldn't take her shopping and she wasn't nice to her. And well, we know everything that's happened. So anyway, it says that um, Harry will take part in celebrations for the 100th birthday and his grandfather, Prince uh, Philip, in June. Well, if uh, he's afraid to travel during COVID and go for the March 31st meeting, then why is he not afraid to go when they unveil and do the celebration for his mother's uh, 60th birthday? William and Harry are expected to team up for the long-awaited unveiling of a statue of their mother, Princess Diana, in Kensington Palace to commemorate what would be her 60th birthday. Look at Megan. She's always posing for the cameras. And boy, I'm telling you, uh, I, I don't know how uh, Catherine and William, uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, have been able to put up with these two lion schemers. The Express tells us that Megan doesn't understand Harry's duties, despite claims Sussex changed the firm forever. Don't don't play her for a fool. She knew exactly what his duties were, and Harry, of course, knew, and he could have explained them to her, but we all know what Megan wants, Megan gets. She wasn't going to have it. She wasn't going to go along with it. The only reason she got introduced to him and wanted to marry him in the first place was for uh, fame and wealth. Um, Megan, uh, so this just goes on to talk about that uh, when they departed and that said they had spent less than two years as a married couple on the royal front line when they claimed that they had no other option but to step down for a life of financial independence. Such a short period in the royal limelight left many questioning whether Megan had truly comprehended what life would be like behind the palace walls before she had signed up for it. We know in their... Um, their engagement interview, how much she lied about it and acting like she didn't know about paparazzi and all that. Yeah, she didn't have to worry about anybody chasing her because she was a nobody. And even when she called up the paps then, she couldn't get them to come. It was only when she married Harry that she could call up paps and get them to come for her and then say that they were hunted and, and papped. They weren't. We can't find one example on the internet or in the papers where that actually happened. They were protected. But as the honeymoon period fades into the 12-month review of the post-royals' life approaches, fans are questioning if Meghan really understood what Harry was leaving behind for her. It also calls into doubt the Sussex could have changed the royal institution if they did not understand their role in it. Hold on one second. I gotta go. I gotta pick up my, my other one, my oldest little baby. There you go, babe. Lord Spencer. Okay, sorry they're so little and have such short legs because they're Yorkies that... They really have a difficult time um, uh, jumping up and down. Okay. All right. So the BBC presenter, Nick Robinson, said, but there is another woman in his life now, a woman who clearly isn't satisfied with how their model is working, who appears, from what we can judge, is saying, we need to get out. You need to get her out. Miss Levin, who we know was uh, wrote a biography on Harry um, shortly before he was married to Meghan, suggested that Meghan clearly did not understand the core principles of the royal family working as a team. 
No, Megan wasn't willing to listen. Megan didn't want to hear about it. Megan knew. Megan had uh, people who trained her, royal courtiers, who explained what royal protocol was. She would clearly dismiss them and say, no, I'm going to do it my way. So we know what it was all about. Megan's not fooling anybody here. She hasn't fooled any of us. Right, guys? Said she continued, I think she'll understand what being a royal is and what duty and protocol and antiquated practices are. I think it's been very hard for her to do that. Well, Angela, you're giving her the benefit of the doubt because we all know that she knew better. As she wrote on her now defunct The Tig, I, in fact, have always had a, had a foot in the world of entertainment as well as the world of public service. Yeah, when she worked for the UN and represented them and did a speech and, and went and traveled to another country, it was all these pitiful poor people living in poverty gathering around her and she had them wave and hug her which you could see that they were clearly uncomfortable because she wanted to seem like a humanitarian her acting wasn't getting her anywhere and wasn't getting her global fame so she thought being a humanitarian would she was trying to be angelina jo jolie 2.0 just like she tried to be diana so it, uh, she knows reports prince william and Kate Middleton are coming to California to visit Harry and Meghan. If they are, then that's for royal duties. We know that there is no way they would go over there and visit them. Harry, uh, Meghan probably wouldn't even let them stay with them. And what are they going to do? Um, how are they going to get Archie back over? Because she's got to have a little boy to show him, right? Because we know that she uses COVID as the excuse to not be able to bring Archie back. And nobody's seen him uh, since, um, let's see, when did they go away to Canada? Back in, uh, in November and then stayed there and went straight from uh, Canada, left Archie there when they went back for their final tour in uh, March of uh, last year, and then they went on to California. So could it be our Prince William and Kate Middleton really coming to the U.S. for the first time since 2014? Several new sources have come forward claiming that a trip across the pond is in store for William and Kate and maybe even their kids this year which, in addition to being a rare treat for um, us Americans, signifies progress on William and brother Prince Harry's long rumor feud. Has nothing to do with it. For years, the uh, generations, the royal family at different times have traveled to the U.S. Uh, for uh, different reasons, and they're not going to make a special trip over for them for that reason. That's right, William and Kate wouldn't come state stateside without stopping at Harry and Meghan's new spot in Santa Barbara. This is such BS that she's putting out there. Meghan will do anything that she can that uh, to, uh, to put it out there that she's still connected and has a close relationship to them because she knows Every business deal going forward, every agreement, anybody that she works for, public um, speech has everything to do with still being and staying connected to the royal family. So um, <laughs> this is just so funny. Anyway, a new source has come forward to us weekly, and we know that Meghan works with us weekly and um, claiming that while Harry and William's feud was once fiercer than anyone knew, the brothers have since resolved to improve their relationship in the coming year. I don't believe that. William and Kate don't have to do anything to resolve that relationship. Harry owes, uh, needs to go to them on bended knee, and so does Meghan, and um, ask them uh, to accept their, uh, to apologize to them and ask them for uh, forgiveness. Um, William and Kate don't owe them anything, so this is all bullshit, people. They are not going to be part of the royal family. Another source, okay, so we've got Omid, and who's the other? Jessica, and who else? Told that William and Kate have long waited to plan a longer trip through America, and that stopped to see, and that stopping to see Harry and Meghan would just be a bonus. They are fascinated by America's history and culture, this source claimed. They'd love to travel across the country sightseeing, the national parks are at the top of their list, and of course do some royal meet and greets as well. The plan is to visit the South, the Midwest, and then go to California. The Fab Four could be back together before we know it, and once Kate and William get to know Megan on her home turf, <laughs> Just uh, maybe a better understanding can be reached between the couples long term. B.S., B.S., B.S. All puff pieces all put out there to make Harry and Meghan look like that they're 
these sweet people that love their family and that they want to heal this rift between them. But we all know that's not the case. And they're trying to make up and make light and, um, and put all this information out there knowing that March 31st is coming up very fast, that it looks like that they want to be part of the family, that they want to make things work. They just want to get what they want, and that's it. So Meghan Markle's uh, biography, or hagiography, Fun and Freedom, is on sale now for 99 pounds. That's right. So for 99 pounds, or 99 cents, or a dollar and something, you can now buy in the bargain bin a copy of your very own Fun and Freedom that's how bad the book was. I bought the book. I read the book. was going to report on it, but I just couldn't. It was just made up with the, the most ill-written things that you could tell that Megan had written herself, and there was no way I was going to say all those made-up things about her. It just tried to make her um, up, you know, as a uh, victim and set her up on a, uh, a pedestal, so that was going to be the end of that. So it says Markle's Finding Freedom and Bombiograph is now on sale for just 10 cents. That's right. Just five months ago, its release was 20 pounds. Now you can buy it for 10 cents. It costs more than that for the paper that it's printed on. So Finding Freedom by Omid Scobie and Carolyn Duran costs 20 in August. And an eBay sell, uh, seller offers a buy now price for $1.98 or one point ninety eight pounds with free shipping. They're not even gonna charge you shipping they want to get rid of it so bad. They don't want any of these copies. It was just like all the tins of biscuits with the uh, photos of Harry and Meghan on them. They couldn't get rid of them at a reduced price. They probably had to just throw them out or feed them to the dogs. But Prince Harry and Meghan Markle uh, says it's now selling for that. And let's see if there's anything else on there. Nope, that just shows a picture of it. And here is uh, true royalty. This is what it looks like, Megan and Harry. And this is, you walked away from your uh, brother, your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law. This is the future king and queen of England. This is who the people admire. This is who they look up to. They follow royal protocol. They never misstep. They always look uh, beautiful and dress like royalty. And Megan, there's, it doesn't matter if you were put in the most expensive ball gown, you would still look like a, well, let me just uh, the think of how I can express that. You would look like a dog. So anyway, uh, that's the end of this one. Um, I hope you'll join me in the next video. If you enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up, like it. If you have a friend that you uh, might be interested in seeing it, give me a share, show me some love, and don't forget to leave your comments. They are posted on a slight delay, but I read every one of them and enjoy them so much. So tell me what you're thinking. Uh, tell me what's going on with you. Tell me how everybody's doing, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Love you all.